Good day students. Myself, Dr. Monica Khetarpal. I am Associate Professor of Physics in Government Dungar College, Bikaner. I welcome you all in the lecture series of MSc Final Physics. I am dealing with the fifth paper that is solid state physics. In this we were, uh, we were discussing ferromagnetism. In our today's lecture, we will discuss block wall. As I have stated in my earlier lectures that ferromagnetism is based on domain structure. We divide a ferromagnetic material into small number of regions which are termed as domains and these domains are spontaneously magnetized. The net magnetic moment of a ferromagnetic material is obtained by adding the magnetic moment of individual domain. So, there are large number of domains in ferromagnetic material. Suppose I have two domains. This is my first domain in which there are spin up and this is my second domain in which all the spins are down. The wall between these two domains is termed as block wall. Here I have shown a block wall between these two domains. When we move from one domain to another domain, it is evident from the figure that spin direction as we move from one domain to another domain, it does not change it does not change abruptly but the spin direction changes gradually. As it is clear if we see these two spins that there is a gradual change continuously in the spin direction and when we move to another domain the spin has changed from spin up to spin down position. If I take two neighboring spins, for example, I am taking the spin SI and SJ. Then the exchange energy between these two spins will be minus 2J SI dot SJ. Here J is exchange parameter and Initially, I am taking my spins to be parallel. That means SI dot SJ. The angle between these two spins is 0. So, the exchange energy in this condition will be minus 2J S square. Now, I am taking a situation in which, in which these two spins make a small angle phi. Then in this condition, the formula for the exchange energy will be minus 2j s square cos phi as the angle between spin is phi. Assuming the angle phi to be small, I can express my cos phi to be 1 minus phi square by 2. So, here the position is that the spins are parallel and here the position is that spins make a small angle phi. So, when we change the position from spins which make an angle 0 to a position in which spins are making angle phi, the energy has been changed. We can see from these two expressions that energy is increased. And the increase is by a factor j s square multiplied by phi square. Now, I am taking that in a single domain, I have n plus 1 spin. That means there are n plus 1 spins in this domain and there are n plus 1 spins in 
this domain and these two domains are separated by a block wall we will determine the total energy of the wall in order to determine this we are assuming that the angle between these two domains is phi zero so the angle between successive spins will be phi zero by n this is the angle between two successive spins of a single domain and phi zero is the angle between two domains so phi and phi zero they are different and i hope you must have understand the difference between these two angles we have determined that when the angle varies from 0 to 5 the increase in energy is j s square phi square and we have assumed that there are n plus 1 spin so if we take only nearest neighbor interaction then in this case the exchange energy will be <coughs> n j s square phi square substituting the value of phi to be phi 0 by n i get my exchange energy to be j x j s square phi 0 square upon n so if the number of spins increase then exchange energy will decrease this is the exchange energy which we have determined now we have to find out the total energy in order to find out the total energy i am taking my wall to be of 1 cm square and let the lattice constant which i am assuming to be small a so the thickness of the wall will be as there are n plus 1 spins the thickness of the wall will be n multiplied by a the total energy comprises of two terms exchange energy which we have already determined and the other term is anisotropy energy i have determined my exchange energy and now i am taking the exchange energy per unit area in order to determine the exchange energy per unit area we will determine we will divide the exchange energy by area as we have assumed that lattice constant is a so area will be simply equal to a square i am denoting my exchange energy per unit area or we can say energy per square centimeter by sigma ex ex means exchange energy this comes out to be j square phi 0 square upon n this is the factor and which will be divided by area a square so i have obtained exchange energy now i am going to determine the anisotropy energy in order to find the anisotropy energy i am finding the volume this anisotropy energy is equal to anisotropy constant multiplied by volume and volume we know is simply equal to area multiplied by thickness and we have taken a wall which has an area of 1 cm square so area is 1 and thickness as lattice constant is a and we have multiplied it by number of spins that is n so volume comes out to be n a my anisotropy energy will be anisotropy constant k multiplied by volume volume is n a so anisotropy energy sigma an is equal to k n a collecting the two terms i can find my total energy sigma to be j s square phi 0 square divided by n a square plus k n a 
Now I am going to find the equilibrium value of N which is obtained by minimizing the total energy with respect to capital N. So differentiating sigma with respect to N I get minus Js square pi 0 square divided by N square A square plus Ka and since is the, this is the equilibrium condition and this is obtained by minimization condition the first differential will be equal to 0. From here I have determined the value of n. The value of n so obtained is j s square phi 0 square divided by k a cube this whole raised to the power half. I am using this value of n in the total energy term. This was my total energy. I am substituting the value of n. Substituting the value of n, I get j square phi 0 square divided by a square and n is k cube putting the value of 1 by n, k cube j square phi 0 square raised to the power half plus the second term which is the anisotropy energy term Ka s phi 0 multiplied by j k a cube raised to the power half. My total energy per centimeter cube comes out to be 2 s phi 0 multiplied by k j up divided by a raised to the power half. So, I have obtained the expression of total energy per centimeter square of a block wall. Here the terms are s is the magnitude of spin and phi 0 is the angle between two domains. K is a constant termed as an isotropy constant and j is parameter which, which is a exchange parameter and small a is the lattice constant. So, in our today's lecture, we have discussed the total energy of a block wall, a wall which separates the two domains in a ferromagnetic material. Thanks a lot for watching.